guys listen this is frankie for checking in listen man i got my guy graham stefan on this thing today i'm gonna do a reaction video i love his work i love his content um i watch a lot of him if we're being honest so today i'm gonna react to one of his videos i'm a real estate investor entrepreneur um have many companies have done a lot of entrepreneur uh work also real estate like I said, real estate investor. Now, I found this certain video, man. Um, why I will never rent on Airbnb. Now, I will say I will never do that also. I will never rent on Airbnb. None of my properties. Um, I haven't seen this video yet, so we're going to watch it for the first time and react to it for the first time. I don't know what he's talking about or where even he's even going to take this thing. But I'm here for the ride, right? Um, just by the title... I can agree already. I'm never putting none of my properties on Airbnb because they will get destroyed. Airbnb will not pay you. So on and so on, man. So let's watch this video together and let's just see what happens. Vacation rental market is oversaturated. What's up, Graham? It's Guy is here. And it's no surprise the housing market is falling. For the first time in more than a decade, prices... The housing market is taking a fall. I will say that, man. Um... I recently had um, one of my properties sit longer than expected um, for a sale, actually. It took longer to sell than I expected. Housing market is coming down. This are down year over year. Rents are dropping at the fastest pace that we've seen since 2016. And the latest... Actually, rent is going up. I don't know what he's talking about, but rent is definitely going up reports are showing that Airbnb could actually be the next domino to fall. This is what's being called the Airbnb bust, which is about to have a significant effect across not only those who operate. If you guys have been paying attention to the news and social media and everywhere else, you see that Airbnb is getting banned in a lot of different states. They banned in New York already. I think LA kicked them out. It's getting banned, especially in New York for sure, for sure. I know that. But it's getting banned in a lot of different states, so he is correct. Airbnbs, but also the entire market as more and more short-term landlords permanently go out of business. So that's why we got to break down exactly what's going on, why the Airbnb bust could be a brutal warning throughout the entire housing market, and then what you could do about this to make money or I guess not lose money on today's episode of Always Be Careful of Falling Iguanas if you're doing yoga in Florida. Although before we start, as usual, if you appreciate all the information and research that, that goes into making a video like this, it would help out tremendously if you air what do we wanna have to do? Never mind. Being busted that like button or subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, it does help out tremendously. And as a thank you for doing that, here's a picture of a blue lobster. So thank you guys so much. And also a big thank you to Grammarly <laughs> for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. All right, so to start, we first gotta bring you up to speed with Airbnb, because this will explain a lot. All of this began in 2007, when two San Francisco residents were looking to raise some money to pay for their rent. In doing so, they came up with the idea to rent out air mattresses in their apartment to the attendees of a nearby conference because all the local hotels were booked. And the name at the time was Air Bed and Breakfast. Within a year, the site had 10,000 users, 2,500 listings, and within two years, they raised $112 million, launched international offices, and had millions of recurring users with their growth becoming exponential. Although the real magic of Airbnb comes with their business model, which is entirely centered around what's called the sharing economy. I will say Airbnb, Airbnb is a brilliant plan, um, a, bu a brilliant business. It is very much a brilliant business. They did come up with that. Um, I believe it was in college. Um, I watched a documentary the other day on um, on TV actually. So just want to put my two cents in. Airbnb is a great business. It's not for me and my properties, but it's a great business. Economy. This allows Airbnb to operate without owning any real estate, managing any tenants, or cleaning dirty units. Instead, they facilitate the exchange of information between a short-term tenant and a landlord while receiving a cut of every single transaction. In this case, Airbnb charges guests a 14% service fee and a host fee of 3%, meaning almost one-fifth of every single transaction is revenue for the company, and that begins to add up fast. In fact, in 2022, they were able to generate $8.4 billion dollars or 23 million dollars eight billion did you hit eight billion dollars bro 
That is that is crazy. Today, in income that is with the current market crazy. cap of seventy-five billion dollars, making them one of the largest companies wow. in the United States. However, as successful as they might appear to be, there's also a dark side that isn't quite talked about, and it all starts here. Come on with the commercial. On June 15th, 2021, Bloomberg reported that Airbnb was spending millions of dollars making nightmares go away before detailing some of the ways that they've hidden crime, vandalism, damage, and assault. Of course, in fairness, any company that does as much daily business as Airbnb is going to have regular outliers. After all, in 2019, they were getting 2 million bookings per day. So even if one-tenth of 1% 1 of customers had any type of issue, that's 730,000 complaints every single year, even though you'd have a 99.9% .9 chance of everything being fine. Although on a broader scale, some of these issues are more prevalent than others, with one of them being referred to as the Airbnb effect. This occurs when inventory gets taken off the market for the use of short-term rentals, increasing the price for everybody else. In this case, it was found that a 1% increase in Airbnb listings leads to a 0.018% increase in rents and a 0.026% increase in house prices. As a result, many cities have begun to ban Airbnb entirely or choose to rent. New York for one. Regulated. For example, Los Angeles no longer al I told you, LA. allows Airbnb to operate if the property falls under rent control. Las Vegas is about to remove all air. I didn't know Vegas was in there. Airbnb listings, with the exception of 2,800 that get approved by a lottery system. Atlanta applied an 8% occupancy tax. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. That is very much true. They have cracked down on Airbnbs in Atlanta, Georgia. When it comes to these apartments downtown and such, you can only rent it for 30 days out of the year on Airbnb. It's crazy, right? Tax is a substitute for hotels. New York requires that hosts be living in the property full time. And this is only a fraction of what's happening in what's being called the Airbnb bust. See, since the inception of short-term rentals, homeowners, landlords, investors, and entrepreneurs have used this as a reliable way of making money. After all, why rent your home to a long-term tenant when you could make four times more money renting it short-term on Airbnb? Fundamentally, Airbnb makes sense on so many levels because theoretically, a tenant would be able to rent a property for cheaper than what it would cost cost at a hotel, and landlords get to make more money in the process for the hassle of managing a higher turnover. But as I'm sure you're all aware, anytime there's a good money-making opportunity, everyone else is going to jump on it. And that's what started to happen. All of yep. a sudden, people began renting and subleasing properties in a process known as Airbnb arbitrage, where they'd guarantee the landlord a fixed rate, yep. and then they would profit the difference from what the home actually generates. I personally don't like that method, Airbnb arbitrage. Um, I know a lot of people that's doing it, making great money, but it's just, it's not my lane. I didn't really go in that lane. That is very, very risky to you and the landlord because if somebody messes that property up, you got to pay for it. If you don't book that property out that month, the landlord don't get paid. Or you come out of your pocket paying him out of your money. So that right there is real, real sticky, man. I, I never hopped into that part of it. Look, as a former real estate agent, I saw so many people doing this from 2012 through 2018. They would buy homes in popular tourist destinations or rent properties for one to three years that they could then sublet on Airbnb. They would hire a management team that would build it out and then they would scale up insanely quickly. But naturally, anything this good is eventually going to get abused. And that's what we started to see. First, we had people rent... Trade futures on the with go the with Trader Mobile. Place trades with simple order management... Listen, um, if you guys like this video so far, um, help my algorithm, man. Help the YouTube algorithm. Like, subscribe, comment to my video. Please share my video. Like it, subscribe. Help me build my community. Um, yeah, man. Let's go. Management tools. Access over 40 yeah, skilled to commercial. out illegal structures on Airbnb for a profit. Then we had people trying to circumvent HOA regulations by renting out their condo. And then you had people renting out their homes on Airbnb for massive parties until that was also banned. The list goes on. Now keep in mind, oh, I say all of this as someone who's actually pro Airbnb. I think it's a great service. And I think homeowners have a right to operate the property in the manner that they see fit. But at the same time, we also have to be realistic and understand that inevitably people will push the boundary 
boundaries of what they're able to do. And that's where the Airbnb bust comes in. Although before we go into that, when it comes to topics like this, the proper communication is key. After all, if you're interested in running your own business, writing to colleagues, or emailing a potential customer, your tonality goes a long way in terms of building a lasting relationship. And that's why our sponsor Grammarly is here to help. I'm sure you've heard of Grammarly, but what you might not know is how impactful their premium suggestions could be, especially when it comes to communicating with your colleagues. For example, I am constantly... I'm gonna pause that right there. Um, I'm gonna jump back to the party. He said the parties, right? Now that's what happened in our Airbnbs, man. That's why I don't you I don't rent my properties out the Airbnbs because that does happen. You know, people mess your stuff up. They throw parties in your house. Um, they break your furniture. You know, before you know it, you come home and everything is just destroyed, right? And Airbnb may or may not pay out. Who knows? Um, I just never liked that idea of Airbnb or messing my stuff up that I work hard to to to, to get. Um, a lot of people use Airbnb. Um, I don't. Brilliant business idea. Brilliant business idea. For me to put my properties on there, hell no. Let's keep going. Writing back and forth with my editor, Alex, every day. And when I'm distracted and in the middle of work, I'm not exactly the most confident in what I say. But Grammarly changes that. Let Grammarly be your trusty sidekick for clear and effective communication with your colleagues so you don't have to go about sending 10 emails to try to explain what you meant in the first one. The Grammarly Premium's tone suggestions really helps ensure that you come across as confident, capable, and sure within just a few seconds. For example, I think we should really get this video done by 12 p.m. so people hit the like button could be better worded as saying, we should really get this video done by 12 p.m. so that people could subscribe. It could even help adjust your tone to be more friendly and less direct. Plus it works where you work, such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word, to ensure that your tone comes across in the way that you meant it. So if you're interested, go to grammarly.com slash gram to sign up for an account. And if you want to level up your writing and tone, sign up for Grammarly Premium with 20% off. Again, the link is down below in the description to get started today. And now- That's definitely an ad. I'm not mad at him though. I'm not mad at him at all. That is definitely an ad though. Definitely gonna make some money off that. Um, Proud of you, my guy. That is a smart ad in the middle of the video. Keep doing your thing, man. Great idea. Now let's get back to the video. All right, now in terms of the Airbnb bust, even though short-term rentals have proven to be an extremely great way to make a lot of money, lately the business has been drying up. For instance, Business Insider detailed one couple that was making as much as $7,000 a month in revenue. But as of this past fall, bookings dropped, his homes were empty more often than not, and his monthly revenue sank to $3,000. This isn't just a one-off situation either. Bookings are down across the board as competition and more inventory is driving prices lower. Even last year, short-term rental vacancies began to spike with many property owners unable to cover their overhead expenses. You might even remember a somewhat viral story a few months ago where an Airbnb manager was stunned that more than half of his homes were empty over Super Bowl weekend while he had to reduce prices by more than 60% just to get some of them rented. Now, I know nobody has any sympathy for someone who's only renting your home for $300 a night, but you have to wonder, why is this happening? Could it be the greedy hotel industry or the politicians who want to limit short-term rentals or Jerome Powell because he raised rates and caused a recession? Nope, instead it comes down to the simple fact that there is way too much supply. In fact, AirDNA found that from February 2017 through January of 2023, no, no, Airbnb no. and VRBO listings in Phoenix more than quadrupled, growing to 21,000 from 5,000. This creates a vicious downward cycle where people reduce their prices to Supply and demand is what it's all about, man. When more houses hit the market for Airbnb, it messes it up. Simple as that. Stay ahead of the competition, which then causes their competition to reduce prices even further until eventually it's a race to the bottom. So that then leads us to what's happening today because it's really the perfect storm. Basically, money was cheap, people had a lot of cash, remote work was encouraged, and Airbnb hosts were at the right place at the right time to capitalize. Because of that, Airbnb was posting record profits, their hosts were rolling in cash, and that led to quite a lot of people following a business model that had worked previously really, really well. In this case, people were listing their homes online, they were participating in rental arbitrage, or they were specifically buying properties because they wanted that sweet, sweet Airbnb passive income. <laughs> However, just as- Hey, I admit, I thought about getting Airbnb, not one of my properties, but as an investment, 
But I started hearing all the stories about how bad it is and people lose money and I didn't move forward with it. But just to admit, it, just to admit I almost invested into one when, around the, when it was in its prime, when everybody said it was making a lot of money off of it. I almost jumped in, but I didn't get in yet. And I'm so glad I didn't. As competition was increasing, interest rates began to rise. Consumers suddenly had less money to spend. Remote work was a lot less encouraged. And bookings began to fall, which resulted in a quickly saturated market that begins to generate a lot less money than people initially expected. So here are my thoughts on Airbnb, and I say all of this as a former real estate agent, current real estate investor, and landlord. First of all, if you're Just wanted to... All right, I'm gonna stop the video there, man, but, um... I have gained enough information to know what he's how he's going to end this thing. Uh, he ends it in a few minutes, actually. But um, once again, man, Airbnb is not for everybody. It's definitely not for me. Um, a lot of people get in and fail. Uh, my biggest fear always with Airbnb was just messing my stuff up. You know, I invested into this home. I renovated it. I uh, put furniture in here. And you guys jumping on it, throwing parties, alcohol, sex, condoms. I've, I've seen so many stories. Um of just homes being destroyed, man, where I don't like Airbnb. And I'm going to compliment this video and his title. I will never put my home on Airbnb, man. It's not for everyone. I care about my stuff. I care about my legacy. I care about what I'm building with my homes. And it's just not for me, man. But once again, I'm going to check out of here. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment um, on the video. Uh, share my page if you will. Follow me across all platforms at Frankie Farr, F R A N K I E F A R R. Um, till next time, man.